Give the Oilers 36 wins on the season. They get it done in a tight one, a fun one to watch in Seattle. Two to one, the final. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Oil Stream Post Game Show. Top Gazola, Joaquin Gage, YouTube Trev with you as we get set to break it all down. Join the conversation. Hit us up, 780-218-9999. And if you're watching on YouTube uh, in the nasty chat, of course, on your way in, like Gager does when he comes to the EST Global HQ, hit the thumbs up. It's a common courtesy. Gager takes off his outside shoes. He puts on his <laughs> Papa Bear slippers, and then he gets comfortable. We encourage that if you are so willing to oblige. Gager, that was a fun game to watch. We're enjoying that one, even though it was a low-scoring affair. Yeah, no, I, uh, a, a totally enjoyable Saturday. Uh as you know, I watched the F1 this morning. But I, saw, I, I replay as well while and, we were doing uh, Hello Hockey. And I'm thinking, okay, I got some work done, and then I'm like, what do I want to do? Am I going to watch this solo? And I thought, you know what? The boys are in the studio. It's an away game. It's great. Why not, uh, why not swing by there and uh, kind of talk about the game amongst you guys? It, it, I love it. It's, it's the most fun. And uh, it was an enjoyable game to watch. And, uh, yeah, it's a, a great outcome. Everyone's happy. I would assume. Uh, probably hitting some local establishments tonight and uh, can enjoy their night. Absolutely, they can. They can uh, enjoy the spoils of victory, as people tend to do on a weekend. And uh, you get an afternoon Oilers win in Seattle, and then that sets up tomorrow against the Pittsburgh Penguins here at home. A weird one, 7 o'clock start. Different, different. You got Crosby, you got McDavid, and it's 7 o'clock on a Sunday. Yeah, uh, yeah, not not uh, not, not good. but there'll still be eyes on it. Of it's course, not, it's, at least yeah. it's not eight thirty. Let's uh, oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's Mika Kepersoff night. That's you get the eight thirty in Calgary tonight. Uh, but we're gonna focus on this game. Uh, keep those texts coming in seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine, and via the nasty chat. Let's go into the scoring summary and game stats from this one. Uh, the Oilers get out of the first period lucky to be even, no score. Stu Skinner was excellent in that first period, all game long. And Gage, I don't know how many times you're like, nice save, nice save. Look at that. That was, what are they doing in front of him? And every time that Seattle had a chance, Skinner was there to answer the challenge. And you made a couple of points where you're like, that's what they need. That's how you learn how to become a playoff goalie and a number one goalie. I'm paraphrasing some of what you said. Yeah, some of that stuff's not for the air, what I said. But, no, I... I think sorry. Um, <laughs> no. I thought that was no, no, no. Oh, the way yeah. I the the expletives that I use to describe. Oh yeah, I no, no, those no, out. I filter those. Um, no, uh, I, I, we made reference uh, this afternoon to uh, to an interview with John Tortorella, right, right. and talking about the uh, the uh, intestinal fortitude of of players Great term. and and talking about look. Back in the day, why can't we see goalies play 70 games? And I, I'm a little bit guilty of it, too. I, I see the value of rest throughout mm -hmm. the, the tough regular season. And it's situational, too, I think, is one of the reasons why I think it would be beneficial for an Oilers goalie to get a little bit more rest because of the travel. The, it is tough. We talked about time zones. Yes. You know, uh, Ron Lowe on the Hangout, he was talking about those time zones that you get into. It, it starts messing with you after a while. So, But... Um, tonight, Stuart Skinner was fantastic. Yep. The, the, basically the reason that the Oilers won this game. Um, and I'm getting to the point, Tommy, which I, I, I love when he plays well, but now I'm, I'm expecting it more. Like he's, he's, he's an NHL goalie yep. in, in my, in my opinion. He's a guy that, um, if you were to look at him play over his body of work, not knowing how many years he's been in the NHL. You would think he was, if you were to guess his age, he would probably be 27, 28, 29. He's right? 25. He, he is way ahead of the curve on his progression of becoming a, a, a number one guy, which he's already established. So now we get down to the games. How many games do you play? What do you want to see? You got to remember, this was, last year was his first year. Obviously, yep. getting to the playoffs was one of his major goals. He accomplished that. There's a different goal in mind here. 
I like what I've seen from him from the, the little dip over the homestand at the end of the dip and seeing the style of play. You go into arenas as a goalie, especially as a number one goalie, the first thing you'll hear in the dressing room is weather the storm. You know, yeah. first 10 minutes, let's, let's get out of there, 0-0, zero, zero, you know, one nothing if we can. Um, a lot of times you have to rely on your goalie. Stuart Skinner was that guy tonight. He allowed the Oilers to get into that game and be comfortable and not be down, be chasing the game. He's an NHL goalie, guys, and if he plays over 60 at this point, um, so be it. Yep. That's, what a, that's what a true number one guy does. Game 44 for Skinner today, uh, nine saves, shots were 9-9 nine, nine after one, but I feel like eight, at least seven or eight of those were like important big saves by Stu Skinner in yeah. that first period. So no score after one. In the second, it would be Leon Dreisaitl breaking the ice, his 30th goal of the season, Gager. I know it's not like a 50-goal, 60-assist season for Dreisaitl, but he's still putting together a decent offensive season. He's got 30 on the year. McDavid with the play over to Dreisaitl. one nothing. Edmonton 10-12 into the middle frame. In the third period, Brett Kulak would get his third goal of the year. Actually, that was a very good shift for Kulak because we were talking about the one play man. at the one end, and I'll pass it off to you shortly after I give the assist. Kulak's third from Nugent Hopkins and Dreisaitl. You thought maybe Dreisaitl had tipped it. We watched it like seven times, didn't see the tip, and you even saw Dreisaitl point to Kulak. That goal coming at 8.02. Uh, the wrister from the point, seeing eye almost, getting by Philip Grubauer. That shift was excellent. And you said, put a cape on that, man. <laughs> yeah, it was, he, all, all Kulak needed in that, that shift was a phone booth at that point. Right. Uh, yeah, like, uh, we, we saw it. We were talking about it. And um, he basically took a goal away yep. from the, the Oilers were scrambling. I'm tired of hearing get rid of Kulak. This guy is the guy in the phone booth for playoffs. He, it's, he plays in the six, the five, six role during the season, but plays like a – I would say a 3-4 come playoff time. Yeah. He's got that playoff experience. I think you play with certain individuals during playoffs that just seem to raise their game. He's one of those guys. There's a reason why you don't trade a, a player of his caliber. That shift, taking away the goal, then making the great play to score it at the other, awesome. Yeah. Just awesome. We were, uh, well, everyone except for Trev were high-fiving at that point. <laughs> Trev was sleeping. <laughs> He's had a long weekend already. Uh, that would not be the end of the excitement because uh, the Kraken would make things interesting five minutes later at 13.23. Ely Tolvanen on the power play would uh, kill the shutout bid, scoring his 15th of the year from McCann and Dunn. This one was a bit lucky. It pinballed, and, and you said, Ah, Why? <laughs> why Darnell? Oh, yeah. And why did you go why? Because it bounced off his glove and then hit Skinner's pad as he was trying to go across, anticipating the pass getting through. It bounced off one pad and then the other and then into the net. But you were frustrated. And I totally get it yeah. after you explained it to well, me. Well, I mean, um, I think it was Matawanek who uh who did the the speech, the the any did, given Sunday he speech. He did the speech. And it's uh, the part of the speech where is, if you're going to make mistakes, make them big. Mm. Uh, and it's those in-between plays. And so you see Darnell Nurse kind of in-between. You know, he's not committing fully. He's trying to get in the way. That's, that's when the big blunders are made a yeah. lot of the time. I'd rather, if he's going to do it, just lay down. Then at that point, like take attack it, the shooter, basically. Attack, yeah, or yeah. stay back and let your or your goalie uh, take the shot. Right, you know, don't get in those in between decisions because then you're even if something happens, you're usually in such a poor position to recover from that, and it's unfortunate. Goes off his glove, goes between Stuart Skinner's. It's 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 a little bit of a lucky goal, but I think the decision process for Nurse at that point could have been. Just be a little bit more assertive mm -hmm. at that point. Yeah. Uh, so that would cut the lead. And then the Kraken pour it on. Skinner, some brilliant saves at the end. In the dying minutes, last minute, Skinner stands on his head. You could even see him at the end of that scramble. Just take a deep breath. Be like, okay, well, I guess we won. <laughs> yeah. Someone get that man a, 
an oxygen tank. So he well, was six great. o'clock or lager. I don't know if it's down there. Uh, at we'll, the, send him, we'll, we'll send him a whole flat for that performance. <laughs> uh, he earned it for sure. Shots on goal, 25, 24 in favor of the Kraken. Skinner making 24 saves. The Kraken better than the Oilers on the faceoff dot. Generally, Edmonton is better on the faceoff dots. Hey, we were talking about Yamamoto and his faceoff prowess. He was coming in at 38% today, uh, playing center on the fourth line for the Kraken. Hey, he'll do whatever they ask him to. He, he's just a good kid. Um, Edmonton on the power play, 0 for 2. On the PK, 2 for 3. So they do leak one, but we talked about that pinball and, and the indecisiveness or the in-between. What are you going to do? you caught doing one thing but really want to do another. Yeah. And, Ends up costing them. Uh, hits, 14-5. That's it. That's all they have, 14-5 in favor of the Kraken. Block shots, 21 for the Oilers, 13 for the Kraken. Officially, six giveaways for Seattle to Edmonton's three. 14 takeaways for Seattle to Edmonton's eight. They get the two points. They can uh, enjoy the plane ride back to Edmonton, and then they reset for tomorrow. Uh, what other elements of today's game stood out to you from a positive standpoint and maybe some things that you think they'll probably want to work on tomorrow against the Penguins? Um, for the overall playing, this was what we talked about at the, at the end of the game, Tommy. Just the, I know a lot of fans will think, okay, well, the Kraken, the Oilers should beat them mo- by more than a few goals. Like, they just you know, they the just, season series. Yeah, yeah but yeah. There's, they should show a little bit more dominance. And I think the most important thing at this point, and seeing how this team has been playing over the last few months, is the ability to play in one goal games. We were talking about that stat. Yeah. Of, I would love to see a stat of Oilers in games in within one goal, what their winning percentage is throughout the entire game, or right. how long the game went with one like a, with a one goal differential, up up one or down one, because it's they seem essentially gauging tight games, tight game, yeah. but the confidence level to play in those games. It, it's its difficult, especially if you're a team, I think if you look back to last year's team, that usually was looking to blow the doors off teams, right? right? Like you would see the Oilers up 2-1 late in the third pushing to to score. And not that they didn't, but they they just seemed uncom- more uncomfortable in those situations. When you get after game 82 and get into game 83, 84, 85, that, everything tightens up, it, the pressure builds, and the fact that you've done it mm-hmm. for over the course of, you know, I would say over the last 30, 40 games and been in these types of situ- situations, that's only going to help them when it when it really matters. Yeah. When it's down one, up one, being comfortable with the uncomfortable, um, I think that is more valuable, a lesson to learn throughout the regular season than having to learn it late in the, late in like the playoffs. And, and you hearkened it back to a team that would be used to blowing the doors off of the opposition, four goals uh, ahead, three goals, blowing teams out basically, and then they get into situations like this late in the year and they're chasing a game or they're only up by one. They don't know how to work in that scenario as well as, say, a team like Edmonton that has gone through it, like you said, so many times. That was essentially how you were – yeah, that situation. some of the best teams I've ever played on. We were we were we were okay being down one, you know, going into the third right. because we we knew we had the ability to come back, or you know, we were up up one for for through a time where maybe the other team was pushing. We still felt comfortable in that. We know we could still win that game, and the Oilers have proved that they can do that. Yep, two uh, one win this afternoon in Seattle. They sweep the season series. Against the Kraken, uh, nine and two all time versus Seattle since uh, it came into the league two seasons ago. So uh, taking care of business in the Pacific Division this year, taking care of the expansion team, which has been a pretty damn good one. And, oh yeah, and uh, knocking off the defending Cup champs. Uh, this was a, a death blow almost to the Kraken. They were seven points out of a wild card spot going into action. They had won three of their last four. They were playing better on home ice, had won uh, their last two home games as well. Uh, They beat Boston a couple of times, Gager, in the last couple weeks. They beat Vancouver recently. Like This was a team that probably was feeling pretty good about its game. The Oilers go in there, play a patient game, get some great goaltending, and get the job done today two to one uh okay let's go to some texts here 780-218-9999 as well as uh the nasty chat uh, i'm going back a little bit too far here here we go 
this one from Mike in Thunder Bay says, does anyone still think the Oilers need another goalie? Stuart Skinner is a stud. Mike in Thunder Bay. And if you've been watching Hello Hockey or <laughs> Oil Stream, we've been saying they're not getting another goalie. Uh, that has basically been put to rest. Dirty Curdy says, Skinner scintillating. Now get that man some rest. Play La Bamba with extreme prejudice. Uh, thank you, Dirty Curdy. Dirty Curdy likes to go into like deep dives, especially when the team loses. That is probably like as short to the point, very concise and pleasant. Dirty Curdy has been in a little while, so uh, Dirty Curdy. That's I think good. That's, yeah. a, that's a good indicator. And I mean, on the on the goaltending thing, the the only goalie that really, when I think about it, Tommy, that they could afford is me, and <laughs> and no one wants that. So forget about it. They're oh, fine on the goaltending front. Gager, you could be on the ES. You'd be our starting goalie like that. I'm in training for the next uh, next year's uh, heavy, heavy hockey. hockey. Yeah, well, we need you. Okay. Although uh, our goalies, our goalie mates, uh, we switched the goalies, but uh, Owanek, being the coach that he is, is already planning for next year's game. So oh, he's going to pull me after the first bad one. <laughs> <laughs> and Michael, just be aware, uh, Owanek's already working on it. Okay, here's the text comes in from Peter in Saskatoon. Says there's 53 seconds left, and who can say what will happen? We know this. What an effing brutal dive. Brutal. I would be a lot less peeved if the TV color guy would simply say that was a brutal dive. The referee who called that should feel shame. I vote for truth and transparency in broadcasting. And then he follows up with, holy, just saw the replay. Skinner steals one there. Wow. It's funny when you get the in-game reaction yeah. from the text line and then you get the follow-ups. Yeah. So I thought I would read that one off. Uh, yeah. So, Peter, thank you for that. Corey B., uh, Thank you to Corey B for stopping by. He dropped off yeah. some buddy burgers, hung out with you, got to chat with you a little bit, and uh, we really, really appreciate. Was that. out of the whale and the wolf last night, was sporting the the EST uh, hat, which he, was pretty sweet. He also um, took part in the hot AF wing challenge, Gager. Oh, on, did he on Wednesday? And uh, I asked, like, and he was in rough shape doing it, but he got the wings for a year from Hudson's. He. He did it. did it. He did all 10 wings, all hundreds of thousands of Scovilles. And I asked him how he was the next day. He's like, not good. Oh, the next day. His, his oh, stomach yeah. was in fits. And Trev did it a few years ago. It actually messed up the like the lining of his stomach. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for a couple of years. What what did it end up being? Uh, Yeah, yeah. I got uh, damage. Uh, my, the, the skin burnt. Like the, the lining of my stomach was just totally messed up. <laughs> I had a camera down my throat and on my butt. And they were like, what did you do? <laughs> And I'm like, I ate some hot wings. They're like, okay, well, don't do that again. And I'm like, roger that. And then, uh, yeah, like almost three years of like just, you know, not even joking. It took like almost three years to heal. Um, Goodness. And, uh, but finally, it's good. So every time I go into Hudson's, the last time I was in, I saw the hot AF and I was just like, oh gosh, I'm walking out. Have you ate one of those chips ever? No, they offered one to me on Wednesday and I politely declined. Don't ever do it. I will not. I, I can't I, handle I it. I did one of those chips and it was, it was, because I like. Uh, you like spice. Oh yeah, like, I'll fire it up. You I love flavor. It, it's almost a challenge to me yeah. to see like how hot it is. So I'll never do one of those chips again. It's Ooh. wrong. It, I think it was like 3 million Scoville oh, units on that. Oh my goodness. So that was a little bit too much. But um, yeah, I was not right. For the rest, I didn't think I could eat spicy food for, but I'm, I'm back. You're back. I'm a little bit tougher than Trey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Corey B said it burnt off uh, the, the layer on, of his lips, uh, the skin on his lips. So he was, he was like, yeah, that was painful. But Corey, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for the buddy burgers from A&W. We appreciate that so very much. Fat Dan and Haas. Uh, we'll go to Haas first. Said oil goalied someone. Oh, Finally. There we go. Ah, nice, nice poll. There nice we pole. go. Haas, well said. And uh, Fat Dan with uh, a few. I'm going to stack up here. Uh, this one says, thank you, all caps. So I try to emphasize it with a bit of a yell. Thank you for giving Kulak the respect. The trade Kulak nonsense drives me nuts. I can't wait for playoff Kulak. Also, is Skinner really the goalie the Oilers want going into the playoffs? I mean, when was the last time he did a two-pad stack? And also, lastly, what the F was dry thinking taking a penalty like that in the last minute of a one-goal game? Fat Dan with that one. You want to hit on any of that? Um, a, obviously you haven't been listening to two guys on a goalie too much because basically I've been treating Kulak with, as my long-lost son because I think he's unbelievable. Great guy, um, too. Uh, yeah, and Tommy reaffirms it with uh, the knowledge of what a good person he is. Um, just again on Kulak, like so – 
I was a little bit upset with the dry side of goal. Right. Be- because I hate when guys don't celebrate their goals. It like dry side will seem like he was pained to score that goal. He wanted just to go home. It, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, you see Kulak score that goal. That smile he had in the in the pile. Yes, that's infectious, man. When gu- when guys do that, you see Leon be excited about something. The whole bench is going to erupt. Like you, right? It's it's almost a responsibility, in my mind, to to celebrate your goals. Like I I, I don't understand it. Dusty texts me I right know. away because he knows how much I hate it. Um. Anyway, Kulak. Unbelievable player. I think it would be the hugest mistake to get rid of a player like that. He's well-liked. Um, you saw when he scored the smile on his face, how his teammates embraced him there. Going past the pile, you saw the bench. It it makes a whole – it's a different kind of look to a team, Tommy. It's completely different. Think- but as to the, the Leon penalty, um, I don't know. I, I, it was a little bit easy, yeah. you know. You got to battle at those points, and look, um, to me, if I'm really looking at it from Leon's point of view, um, he has a chance to either end it, but also have the confidence in his team to kill it too if something happens, mm-hmm. right? So uh, either way, it, I'm fine with it. It's a battle for the puck. Leon was trying to end that game, whatever. The And Stuart Skinner was phenomenal. That's why he was first star. He was razor sharp uh, in this one. All right, we'll go to a couple more here and then get Gager's thoughts heading into tomorrow night. Uh, the Liquid Beaver comes in with this one. It says, I'm glad they won. However, I did not like the Oilers game at all. To be nice, Evander Kane in his own end is a total tire fire. He frustrates me to no end how soft he is along the boards. He isn't the only one, but after but for a power forward, he needs to be better. Stu was excellent. That one coming in from the Liquid Beaver. Offensively, we saw Kane make some nice plays. He had glimpses. the toe drag. Yeah. Glimpses, yeah. But then there was those other times where you're like, what is he doing there? Why is he, What's going on? And then we saw Kulak, or pardon me, not Kulak, Knobloch, uh, shuffle up the lines, move Kane with Perry, and McLeod, Fogel gets bumped up with uh, Nugent Hopkins and Yanmark. And there was a few good moments there, but what did you see tonight from Evander Kane, Gager? Quite frankly, not enough, Tommy. Um, here's a guy that uh, he he's a... He's not showing what he was like when he first came to the Oilers. It was a it was a very hard physical game, and even in the own end, like he's he seems to be letting a lot of guys off the hook. I I don't know if there's an injury or or something else is going on, but we're just not seeing the Evander Kane that I think uh, we've seen over the past two years with his physical play, kind of that two hundred foot game where he was making difficult in all areas. Yeah. Uh, so it's. I don't know. I mean, he, he, statistically, it's a pretty good year for a guy that doesn't get uh, power play time on the yep. on the first PP, having over twenty goals. But the, you need more from a Vander Kane. You need that that edge, that uh, that sandpaper that that drives the other teams nuts. That we we've essentially we've become accustomed to, but we don't see it right now. He was one of their better defensive forwards when he came to the team. Yes. He was on the PK at times. He was relied upon. So that's, he can do it. He has done it. He's done it recently. Has he done it as much this year? No, you're right. You know, maybe he's nicked up. He was nicked up for a good chunk of la- uh, this season. The the freak accident last year was not good, obviously, with the wrist and Pat Maroon and all that. But um yeah, it just doesn't seem like the same of Andrew Kane. No, we get those flashes, like you said. And we yeah, there's that's that's the thing. You get you get these glimpses of what he can do, but it's it's too far and 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 few between uh, those moments this right. year so far. Well, when he wants to engage, look out because yeah. he can be a force out there. Brandon from Windsor says LFG huge win, mix in a water boys, and then Eden says afternoon guys. Skinner had a whale of a game today. For the last several games, I feel like teams are taking advantage of the nurse CC pairing. I think part of it is the inability of that pair to move the puck out as fast as the other two pairs. What are your thoughts, Gager? Cause uh, Eden wants to know. Um, yeah. Good observation. I think uh, I was at the, the game against Calgary, um, obviously a poor game by, by that most players, but um, I found that a, 
everyone throughout the lineup, but sometimes you kind of get the ISO cam on Nurse and CC for yeah. a time. Um, they seem like they they're they weren't playing fast. Their decision making was poor as a as a defenseman, especially in those in the slots that they're slotted in. Um, they're you got to think of it like a chess match, Tommy. You're 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 way ahead of the play at times. Like you're separating the guy with the puck. I'm going to get the puck. I'm going to put it there because that guy's. It just seemed like okay. I've I've done this. Now what do I do? Mm-hmm. They were just their internal processors weren't firing that game. They were they were acting like Commodore sixty fours out there. They just <laughs> they 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 weren't. Yeah, they they just couldn't compute the game at an NHL level, and it seems to be. That's been kind of into their play over the last, I would say, a few weeks. That uh, and that's why we're talking about that pair. Where during that streak, they were, Excellent. I mean, they were uh, they were supercomputers. They they knew exactly what they were doing without the puck, with the puck, and getting in those right positions. And you know, it's an eighty-two game schedule. So the, this is where the mental fatigue starts coming in. Yep. Um, I'm sure they can get it back, but yeah, a, a good observation. I've seen that too. Um, you touched on it. Dave Pagnotta said it on Hello Hockey. Listen, we've heard CeCe's name also out there as a potential for a, a guy that could get moved out if they want to upgrade D or make a move for another roster player. Uh, Pagnotta flat out said it on Hello Hockey today. CeCe wants to stay here. I think he's well-liked. Everything I've seen is interactions with the, the teammates over the last two, three years. Uh, everybody seems to get along with him. But if you got to get something... What it usually takes is giving something up, and he would be one of those people that would maybe go. Does that wear on a guy, especially one who's a kind, thoughtful, easygoing type of person? Yeah, I, this, this time of year is brutal. Like, uh, I remember Brian Marchment uh, coming to the airport, and he had, like, eight suitcases with him, right? Because there, were, there, were, there was rumors that he was getting traded, and we were going on a long road trip, so he brought a bunch of stuff. It's... It's tough. This is this could be one of the reasons. I mean, imagine you're at a job and all of a sudden you're there's rumors. Well, you might have to move. Like you might have to uproot your family, your kids, everything, and go somewhere new. It's uh, you try to block it out. That's why these guys are professionals. But you can't say that that's not going to affect your play a little bit, right? And maybe yeah. it's because you're trying to do too much to prove you want to stay here. Maybe you know you you just you can't. It, it, it's difficult to, to play this time of year, especially yeah. when you hear your name in rumors. Hey, some guys can block that stuff out. Maybe other guys not so much, but uh, we don't know. We're just saying, hey, mm-hmm. could could this be a possibility? Perhaps, perhaps. And uh, Pagnata also said he knows that he could be a guy that gets moved out. So uh, just a thought. Uh, all right, I want to read this one, then we're going to get Gager's thoughts on the Pittsburgh game tomorrow, and we'll go into the locker room as we roll on here on the Oil Stream Post Game Show. Tom Gazzola, Walking Gage, YouTube, Trev with you, 780-218-9999. If you want to text in your thoughts about the game, if you have a question for Gager, we can uh, slide that in too. And then uh, Nasty Chat if you're watching on the EST YouTube channel. I want to get to this one. F and A, buddy, an Euler win on my 40th birthday. Play La Bamba. That's a song I like to hear today. We would play that for you. That's in from... Uh, Pat Janex, uh, PJ, who also calls himself Piss Jug. Yeah. And uh, Pat used to work for the Saskatoon Blades. I got to know him there. Uh, so happy birthday, PJ. They got the win for you. And uh, you can crank La Bamba to your heart's desire all night long. And uh, wishing you a happy birthday today, pal. So uh, make it a good one on a Saturday where the Oilers pick up a win and you're very happy from all of us here to you. Also, Edmonton gets Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is in Calgary. They get the Jersey retirement night for Mika Kiprasov. Three games and four nights for the Pens out west. Uh, if you're Edmonton and you're lining up this game, how do you look at it, Gager? I, I look at it as a as a chance to actually have a good start and jump up to the lead. Did not have that today. No. Again, yeah. this was another wading into the waters, kind of feeling it with the with the water wings, like uh, like YouTube Trev when he goes swimming, right? Yeah. So, um, no, I <laughs> like this is finally get out of this funk. I mean, this is going to be a late game. Yes. Right. You know, these guys are probably not going to get into Edmonton for <laughs> for a while, and then it's a earlier start. Yes. Next, so. Perfect chance to jump on this team. I would look 
advantage Edmonton. Let's see that first 10 minutes. I'd like to see them score the first goal mm -hmm. and then just dictate the play from there because it's going to be a uh, – Mika Kiprasov, man, what a goal. He was excellent. He was just phenomenal. Just And the f I love the fact that he – he was he's one of those guys where a great goalie um and kind and just left you know he left at i don't maybe not the peak of his game but i'm sure he could have played another few years yeah. right like i think he even had another year in his deal if if memory serves me correctly um but yeah just a, a a tremendous guy one of those guys you've never heard a bad thing about completely deserved noodles talked about it just uh having a few late nights in, in Calgary over the last few days. Sounds like a ton of fun. Nice. Um, I'll watch it. Nice. Out of respect, the goalie union uh, sticking together. You're also going to be busy doing some other things. Uh, I like this, that you, you're you like, all right, I'll stick around. I've got time. I said, don't worry. The game will be over by 430. Stick around for a segment. We've done that. But uh, you and the boy, some father-son time, and I like where this is going. What are you guys up to, you uh, gauge fellas, that getting after it? A yeah, bit. me and uh, me and my eighteen-year-old son. We yeah. got a we got a night out at the uh, at the brew house. It's a tomahawk night. I love um, this. Uh, Mike Wheeler was uh, it worked work wonders for me for a reservation. We're uh, probably got a picture with uh, Mjolnir and uh, icebreaker or whatever stormbreaker, yep. and um, and then possibly probably go hit the VIP with for a for a late night matinee with Dune. So I love it. It's uh, it, it, I've always wanted to do this with my kids and and stuff, and now he's of age, so it's uh, it's a it's a super night for the Gage Clan. Oh, you guys are gonna enjoy those Tabahawk steaks. Uh, it was a super afternoon for the EST group to have you here, and I like when you pop by and just out of the blue, I was like, damn, that's awesome. So. No, I I I it's uh, I'm lucky to be able to hang out with you guys. It's uh, it's great to to talk hockey and watch the game and. And look at you two, Trev, all, all hung over. Making and, him and, cry. And, uh, and he was, uh, he, yeah, I know. He was, he was great. He was so quiet tonight. Was, <laughs> Should was... I don't know if you caught his giggles when you said the water wings thing. Oh, really? <laughs> he's, yeah. he's awake now, but that yeah. was hilarious. That was good. It was good. Oh, uh, Gager, good. great stuff. We're going to go inside the Oilers locker room right now. Uh, water wing boy, who are we going <laughs> to hear from? Yeah, on the topic of goalies, let's hear from the Oilers goalie. This is Stuart Skinner teammates first and your own performance we'll get to that in a second but Brett Kulak is obviously a heart and soul guy in this locker room does all the right things doesn't necessarily get in the goal column quite uh, quite often but to see him score the game winning goal in a big game like this what does that mean to you it's wonderful to see um, very proud of him I'm, I mean he he just played that shift really well um, it was just a really smart play on his uh on his choices and uh, getting that shot off as quickly as he did, and it was a bullet. And I, uh, I know from practicing with him, he's got a, you know, it's a little bit undercover. It's not spoken as much, but he's uh, he's got a really nice shot. All right, how about your game? Uh, I mean, you were locked in right from the drop of the puck. <laughs> was this just one of these games where you're feeling it right from the start? Yeah, I, f I uh, definitely felt good. Uh, felt good right uh, right off the bat. I mean. I got into the game pretty quickly with the, I think their first two chances were uh, pretty good ones. And when you stop both of them, you tend to feel a little bit better about the night. So um, I think getting those kind of the first five, 10 minutes, um, you know, being able to make the saves that I was able to come up with was, uh, you know, brings up the confidence for sure going into the rest of the night. As a goaltender and competitor, do you almost prefer that being thrown right into the fire off the top or as opposed to easing your way into a game? It really depends. Um, <laughs> If you get thrown into the fire, you get scored on right away. It's not. Uh, it's probably not the same. But um, if you do make those saves, it, it is a big difference. Uh, I also think it really helps out the team with, uh, you know, how they feel as well going into it. You were, you were busy at the start. You were obviously busy there the last minute. Can you kind of talk us through that last six on four sort of situation? A couple of big stops you made there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got uh, a little bit fortunate with uh, getting a little bit of time to get back to my feet. Um, and then being able to get across on Eberle, I think that was uh, that was a really big moment for myself. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, you got to give a lot of credit to to Seattle tonight. I thought they came out hot, um, and they stayed that hot for pretty for the whole game. <laughs> so they uh, you got to give them a lot of credit. Um, but yeah, really happy the way that we played, especially in the six on four. And I think you got to give a lot of credit to my demon blocking those types of shots that they did. I know I I saw Vinny's back and. Uh, it's uh, he's a warrior, to say the least. 
Uh, passing on the love and appreciation to his teammates after an absolutely tremendous performance. Stuart Skinner there uh, making 24 saves on the afternoon. And I'm glad he pointed out Vinny DeHarnay in that last minute blocking those shots. DeHarnay, I think you heard DeHarnay scream, ow, at one point. And I also recall DeHarnay on that last shift shaking off one hand and then shaking off the other one because I think he either got a shot and then a slash or two shots off of his hands, and then he got hit by another puck, and uh, the guy is an absolute warrior. We were pumping him up, talking about him on the pregame show, and uh, that's part of why confidence goes a long way, and they've helped DeHarnay. They've given him a little bit of leash, and, and they haven't pulled him out of the line. I mean, they don't have any defensemen to take him out, but... They have stuck with him, and he has rewarded them by wanting to improve his game, by, by learning the NHL game, by learning through mistakes. And uh, if you've got the trust of the coaching staff, and Mark Stewart, Paul Coffey, and Chris Knobloch are looking at you with a minute to go, trying to kill off a penalty, down two guys, six-on-four situation for the Kraken, I think that says a lot. So uh, great night. For Stuart Skinner, and then uh, good on him being the consummate pro that he is, appreciating giving some love to a guy like Vinny DeHarnay who put together a pretty good game. And then speaking of which, Joaquin said, give this man a cape. He had the game-winning goal for the Oilers tonight. It is Brett Kulak. The big goal you scored, obviously, the GWG today. Uh, just to contribute offensively in a game like this, tightly contested game, what does that mean? Yeah, it always feels good contributing that way. You know, it doesn't happen all the time, but when you see one go, go in, it feels good, especially, like you say, it was a tight game, it was close, there wasn't too many goals happening, and uh proved to be a big one, so, yeah, it was exciting, it feels good. How big of a role did your goaltender play in today's victory, right from the drop of the puck, he looked dialed in? Yeah, he was, he was great, he, you know, the first period, we were giving up a lot, we, we gave up more chances than we'd like to all game, but uh Stu played really well, he's been, he's been great for us all season, and it's nice to see that from him, and uh, just gives confidence to the whole group, and yeah, he's, he's a big part of the team. What do you make of your team's ability to win hockey games in different fashions right now? Uh, yeah, it's, it's nice to see. You're just finding a way to get the job done. And uh, what I like is, you know, when things aren't going our way, like we've had so many comeback wins and we're just down down a couple goals, it's no problem. And, and we're believing in each other and just playing our game. And, uh, and yeah, we're getting results, so that's nice to see. They initially credited your goal to Leon. Did you know right away that it had it was off your stick? Uh, yeah, I know he kind of skated through th through the the seam or whatever there. I wasn't sure if he got a stick on it or not, but yeah, my, I was just trying to get it there quick, and then uh, to see it go in, it, it felt good. But I, I couldn't tell if he tipped it or not. But. Did he say anything in the in the scrum there in the no, group? He he was acting like he didn't touch it, so that kind of made me feel like it was mine. So, what's yeah. it like to see a teammate, Leon? Not that he would take credit for something he hadn't done, but he really pointed to you, like he really wanted to make it clear yeah. to to you and and maybe the officials that that's not mine, that that's his goal. Yeah, yeah. I think he's just he's happy to see the puck go in, whether it's off his stick yeah. or off of teammates, and uh, that's the kind of guy he is. And yeah, I don't think he's he's out there sneaking around looking at the video after <laughs> making sure it wasn't his or something. So. Um, no, it's good whether it's his or mine. It, it, no matter what, to get the the game winning goal go in, it's it's nice. That was a pretty good shift by you because you uh, interrupted a pass that was when Stuart Skinner was down. You blocked that pass and then up the ice you guys go and you score. Was that hockey kind of giving you yeah. good karma a little bit? Maybe, maybe. Yeah, it was it was an up and down game all, all day. So uh, yeah, you never know what you're going to get kind of on a one o'clock game. But uh, everyone was skating. It was it was back and forth. It was it was a pretty exciting game. Offense from the blue line, Brett Kulak, the game-winning goal tonight. Uh, a goal, plus two, one shot, which went in. 14.52 time on ice, and a good question there by Tony asking about the hockey gods and the good karma. He did break up that play at the other end of the rink. The Oilers take it back down to the offensive zone, and it ends up being Kulak getting the puck to go by Philip Grubauer off the post and in. Traffic in front of Grubauer as well on that goal. That's important, and uh, what Dreisaitl didn't get a piece of it. It's Kulak's goal, his third of the year, and all that matters is that the team in orange and blue won the game tonight. I think that's, at the end of the day, what all of those guys were talking about and what they meant. Uh, really quickly, 
This one in the nasty chat from Joel says, got to bounce, supper's ready, have a good day. See you all on Discord, nasties. Good night, boys. Uh, fantastic. Uh, good night, Joel. Always good to catch up with you. Uh, okay, are we going back inside the Oilers locker room? I think we are. Let's do it. Who's next? We've got the head coach of your Edmonton Oilers, Chris Knobloch. All right. Uh, your team's effort today, beginning with the man in net. Stewart was outstanding. Um, you know, I think uh, early on there were some mishaps with the pucks, um, missed passes, led to good scoring chances. Second period, I thought we played really well, didn't give up very much. And then third period, last 10 minutes, we were just holding on, especially on the penalty kill at the end of the game where Stewart's made some really big saves, especially the one with um, just a few seconds left with the blocker short side there. Um, Stewart played really well. As you guys were teetering back and forth in the win and loss column, uh, you guys were you know, in an effort to find your game a little bit. You guys have rattled off three consecutive victories. What's been the main turning point in that regard? Well, you look at the play of the skins the last three games. He's been outstanding. And uh, we've been tightening up a little bit defensively. But the biggest thing is uh, the goaltending has been outstanding. And we've been able to... He's been making big saves. Um, you know, the goal scoring hasn't been quite there that we would like. We've been a little... Um, you know, just haven't been able to find the Nez often, but uh, um, yeah, I think that'll come eventually. What would you say about when you arrive, you start to get to know players because you're now coaching them, and Vinny Deharnay's evolution, there you are, uh, trying to hold off the other team, they've got a power play, and he's, you know, he's on the ice, what kind of compliment is that to him and the kind of, you know, ability he's shown? I've been very impressed with him the entire time I've been here. I think he, you know, he transports puck really well. I know there was probably at the beginning probably some um, jitters or a um, little nervousness with the puck, but he overall for his size he was pretty good. Now he's really taken it up another level and been able to make so many plays and uh, transport the puck into the forwards. And then what I think has always been there and. He's been, you know, graduate from the American League into the NHL. Is he's a really good defender. He's hard to play against. He takes up so much uh, space with his reach and his size, um, and because of that size, he's able to break up plays. And also, he's he's got a pretty good work ethic. He's, you know, he's blocking, stepping in front of shots, uh, battling for loose pucks. Um, you know, it's nice to have. How about his defense partner, Brett Kulak, getting in the goal calling for him? Yeah, it was nice. I thought Brett has been playing so well. So well last, um, you know, especially since the, the break. Um, you know, we've had our ups and downs throughout the, uh, you know, through the break when we lost games. But um, you know, one guy I think that hasn't been up and down is uh, Brett. I think he's been playing so well, and his game has been uh, pretty consistent, and um, he's really helped us. When you guys are having a hard time breaking through, getting on the board, how much of a luxury is it to have Connor and Leon? You just know that they're they're going to break through at some point. Yeah, it's it's definitely a benefit of, um, you know, even when game's not going so well, you know, there's some teams that have that goal scorer, that player that can break the game open, just give them a little opportunity and they, they'll uh, get on the scoreboard. And, you know, we've got we've got a couple of them and, um, you know, that was a big difference of the game tonight. All right, that was Oilers head coach Chris Knobloch giving some love to Brett Kulak. He has been really consistent all year long. I think outside the first four or five games of the year where I think he struggled a little bit, CeCe struggled a little bit, the Oilers' blue line was struggling a lot, um, Kulak included. Since then, though, his game has been very, very solid and consistent. Yes, there have been times where he's made mistakes, but uh, generally it's less so than his peers on the back end for the orange and blue, and then a little bit of love there. And praise for Vinny DeHarnay from the head coach as well, and rightly so. DeHarnay was solid, and him and Kulak uh, had a pretty good afternoon in Seattle. You can text us, 780-218-9999, or if you're watching on our YouTube channel, hit the thumbs-up button. Please and thank you. And you can get in on the nasty chat. Uh, sounds like there's going to be a little bit of a post post-game show discussion on the EST Discord channel. Uh, I'm starting to get used to it. I checked it out the other day a little bit more. Joel and uh, Jen have been helping me out with it, so uh, I'll probably lean on them a little bit more. But uh, really cool to see that the community it stays together even when we're not on the air. I know the boys like it. I've, uh, I've started to learn about it. Uh, even Lieutenant Eric Trev 
is is uh, starting to ask questions about it. Where are you? Get yourself on. Yeah, yeah, he's starting to, he's starting to figure out what it is. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, it's cool. You're you're exactly right. Like we started this little community thing, and then they're they're their own community now. Yeah. They're like, hey, like they're 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 all you know just chiming in. They're all starting their own conversations. Uh, we, they don't even you know need us to have this platform. Right. You know, but they they just as soon as we're done, they just go and talk on the Discord. It's it's pretty cool. It is neat. So. so I like it a lot, and yeah, LT's, you know, he's a, he's a little he's a little uh, more traditional. He doesn't quite know what it is, but uh, he'll get there. He'll figure it out. I like that he's asking. That's a good sign. Yeah. Well, For someone he, he was like, he was you? like, he was like, what is a Discord? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, what is a Discord? It's like it's just Discord. What is Discord? Yeah. It's not a Discord. He doesn't know, but the fact that he's asking means he's legitimately curious. And we'll probably uh, dip in there. So uh, it's funny because they have like, I don't know if it's gifts of us, but there's yeah. like, I saw like 10 pictures of me. Some of them are bad. Some of them are pretty funny. Yeah. But, I got a photo, uh, a couple of greasy photos of me as well on there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah there's some gifts on there. Funny. So many chats. Definitely join the discord. Yeah. I know Dusty retweeted it. Um, I think LT actually Today. retweeted. Uh, yeah. 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 I, and so. I also, and I think it was Joel or Jen that was helping me. I started writing and chatting in like the wrong chat. And they're like, hey, like that's cool you're over here, but you're in the wrong chat. I'm like, I don't even know how I got into the chat. I'm just saying hello. And uh, a bunch of people, I think Rip City Step was in there. And they're like, you can come over uh, to this chat because there's like sub chats for each show, I believe. And, uh, and then people were like talking to me. Yeah. Like, I could hear their voices. Yeah. I was like, whoa, whoa <laughs> yeah. where are you? How it's do kind you of do spooky. That? It's like, it is kind of spooky. where's that coming from? Yeah. Uh, so check it out uh, if you want to continue the conversation. When we say goodnight, uh, you are more than uh, welcome, welcome to. I don't know. Like, it's your, it's their Discord. Uh, it's, just, it's just, I get to be a little part of it. It's kind of cool. It's absolutely cool. And the, the time that, the, the, you know, they've taken out of their day. Because there is so many chats, like you said. Like, I was blown away. I thought there was just one chat that they had. But then you look to the left, and there's all these. It's like Oilers talk. And it's like Hangout. And it's uh, two guys. So it's really cool. Jason says, wait, you still haven't explained what a Discord is. And which chord is it? This chord or Discord? Oh, Jason. Hilarious. Hilarious. Uh Uh, uh, JCD780, who's been with us since, like, Hello Hockey all day. Thanks, JCD, for uh, spending your Saturday with us as he's going to get in there. We had one at 1260. I don't think we did. I Was there one? Can't, I can't confirm nor deny. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. All right. 2-1, the Oilers win it over the Kraken. Uh, bad start. Skinner good in the first, especially. Oilers hang in there. Break the ice in the second. Leon Dreisaitl on a nice feed from McDavid. Uh, they get some chances, hit some posts. Grubauer, probably his best game against Edmonton in a while. He had, I think, won his last four starts, if I remember off the top of my head correctly. And uh, Seattle was a team that was playing relatively well of late. They'd beat Boston. They had beaten, um, they had beaten Chicago, yes, but uh, they've also beaten Vancouver. And uh, Edmonton goes in there and, and really makes it tough for Seattle to make a, a run to the postseason. Kraken through 60 games now, uh, 63 points, seven back of Nashville and L.A. And really, like, Calgary has to go on a run because they're at 63 points as well. St. Louis would have to go on a run. They're at 63 points. Calgary has won four straight, by the way. Mini at 62 points. Like, that... That group in the Western Conference uh, needs to make some hay. Looks like Calgary's starting to wake up a little bit here, although they sound like they're going to be sellers come Friday. We already saw them get rid of Chris Tanev. What does that do to their playoff chances? Probably doesn't help them, especially if they're loading up on prospects and picks. So we'll see how that all plays out. Nashville's on fire. Seven straight wins, 8-2 and two in their last 10, and then uh, L.A., 6-4 and four in its last 10. Um Trying to chase down the Oilers. Edmonton, by the way, as of right now, moves into second in the Pacific. Uh, the Golden Knights are in Buffalo tonight. 
Yeah, I was just going to say that's something uh, we haven't talked about yet, Tommy. It's yeah. uh, it's interesting. They finally they finally caught their nemesis, and uh, you know they, they with two games in hand. You know yep. that that's huge. That is huge. So they got a better winning percentage right now, and uh, one point ahead of the Golden Knights. Will that last? I don't know. And we'll see. Probably well, not. Probably not. Well, and like you said, you had a question of the night. It was maybe last week. Like, well, what's it going to look like? Or are the Oilers? And I I really think it's it's going to be for this. This is it's going to be a race for the last stretch here, Tommy. It's going to be really yeah. interesting how it plays out. And in saying that, like the Oilers are now nine points back on the Vancouver Canucks. Are they going to catch them? I don't know. Like I'm just four looking at it. They're four hand. games. So that's eight points. You know, they win yeah. those. They're right in there, Tommy. They, they really are. More time. Yeah. So that's a that's a huge game. So they it's it's crazy that they're having this conversation. With the start that they had at the beginning of the year, yep. one of just the weirdest, most roller coaster seasons. I can remember, and it's, it's just it a crazy. It's insane, and like yeah. they they made up for it, you know. Obviously, with the the huge winning streak, and they're they're right in it now. So it's it's now just you know playing consistent hockey. It's you know it's it's now or never, Tommy. They're doing it. Winners of three straight, six three and one in the last ten. Uh, after going four five and one out of the gates, uh, coming out of the. All-Star break slash bye week. Good to see. Uh, that's a good reminder to Trev that we'll go around the National Hockey League, find out what's been going on, get everyone up to speed before we get into the player of the game. Uh, 13 games on the schedule today. A bunch of them in the books already, obviously. Uh, Winnipeg with the huge comeback against Carolina. Down three zip. Poor Jocelyn. Uh, and Jay was texting in Jocelyn's uh, significant other. And uh, the Canes blow a 3 nothing lead, lose 5-3 to the Jets. And uh, in Detroit, the Florida Panthers blank the Red Wings for zip. Edmonton 2-1 over Seattle. And in Nashville right now, the Predators lead the Avalanche. Four minutes left in the second period. 2-1 to one is the score there. That should be a good one. Keep your eyes on that game this evening. St. Louis up 2-1 on many seven minutes remaining in the second period. That game in St. Louis at Enterprise Center. In Buffalo, 1-0. The Sabres lead the Golden Knights. Eight minutes remain in the first period. Lots of hockey left in Buffalo. Philly, one zip over Ottawa. Seven minutes into that game in Philadelphia. Uh, off to Florida we go. Tampa up or down 1-0 to Montreal. Uh, eight minutes into the first period. After seven minutes, no score between the Leafs and the Rangers in Toronto. Islanders and Bruins about to get going right away. Then you've got Chicago welcoming Columbus into town. Dallas hosts San Jose. And the late game is going to see Calgary welcome the Pittsburgh Penguins. It is Mika Kiprasov night at the Saddle Dome, retiring his number. He was an excellent Calgary Flame, an oiler killer himself. And uh, with all due respect, you have to give him that respect. He was a really good goalie for a long time in the NHL, even though he was in Calgary. It, it was uh, pretty cool being able to, well, you know, from being down south, That's uh, it, was, it was a lot of flames. All my friends were, were just all. in flames country. Yeah, that's a, so Kipper's off. It was Kipper this, Kipper that. Mm-hmm. and uh, But, it, you know, it, it's, it's really cool to see Tommy. Like, it is. And, uh, yeah, just it, he kind of just, as soon as he was done hockey, he left. And, it, it, and it's kind of crazy. how He's just very secretive. Very secretive he's guy. Very to himself. Yeah, You know is. what? Some Finns are like that. Like, they're very friendly. They're nice. Uh, they like to party. They like to have a good time. But, you know, like Valtteri Bottas, the F1 driver, like, he seems like he's always crudgy and oh, this, oh, that. Tells you how he feels. Kiprasov does his thing. Does he? Is he always pleasant or look like he's in the best mood? No. But by all accounts, he was a very well-liked guy. He was an excellent goaltender for a long time. Credit where credit is due. Kudos to him. There was uh, this tournament in Tabor, Alberta, you know, very down south, and uh, his son uh, was playing. It was his son or daughter, actually. I think it was his daughter was playing in this tournament, but uh, Kiprasov, he drove his kid down. You know, it's in Tabor. There's not really... It's a pretty small country town. Yeah. Uh, all it took was one of my friends to go up and ask a photo, and then the whole town was just, oh my gosh, Mika Kiprasov is at the arena yeah. right now. So he was not so happy, but <laughs> it was kind of funny how that worked out. I love it. Uh, I'm sure he was kind enough to oblige, though. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's go. Uh, Eden says this about Discord. I didn't know about this. Um, Eden says, just as a heads up on Discord, like any social media thing, there can be good and bad on there. Be clear, 
who is and isn't moderating those channels so you guys don't need to take unnecessary heat. That's good to know. I don't know much about it. I think Joel and Jen are... Yeah, and they made uh, all of us mods, so okay. we can go in there and take if, a we, look. if we don't like what we're seeing, Clean you're out. Up. You're out of here. Exactly. Be good to one another. That's all we ask. Everybody love everybody, just like Jackie Moon said. Uh, ELE, that's our motto. This one from Coach Mike says, Tommy, if Knobloch is going to stick with 29, 97, 18 on the top line, then what other trios would you like to go with? There's not much offense from the other three lines. Coach Mike, I think the other three lines are capable of offense. Do we see it consistently? No. And Coach Mike, I don't think 97 and 29 stick together. I think eventually we see them split up. So that's just my take. 97 and 18 have become a pretty damn good pair. And uh, rotating cast of characters on the left side there. Probably best to have Kane up there when when he wants to be playing. And then uh, figure it out with Nugent Hopkins, Dreisaitl, and someone else on the right side. If the Oilers can bring in somebody, great. We shall see. Um, I think the third line is capable of more offense at times. You know, they score every now and then. Sometimes you get one from the fourth line. But uh, I think I don't think they're going to stick with 29-97, Coach Mike. That's just my feeling. Yeah, I I agree. It's like they do have their options, but they, they you know, and there's still a little bit of time left. But they do have to they do have to figure this out. And Knobloch yeah. said that in the last few post games, he's he's not too happy. He's you know he's starting to mix the lines, and that's one thing yep. he was really consistent of. And it was it was nice. Like he it was the the first line for the longest time was Nuge, uh, McDavid, and Hyman, and didn't switch it uh, even if they were producing not producing. He just kept it as is. So. Yeah, that, maybe they go back to that too. They, yeah, maybe like Hopkins back up there for sure. But uh, well, I, I don't think Kane and Dry settle. It's not really working right now. Don't do that anymore. No, They've tried and tried and tried. I agree. Yeah. Ken says, Tommy, did you guys turn down the heat at EST HQ on weekends, or is that Gager's lucky game too? Yeah, that was style. That was just style from Joaquin. Pure style. Yeah, it looked good. That's about it. Looked good. Pulls it off. Yeah. He had his slippers on too. Yes, he did. No, it's warm, very warm in here, actually. RBM Texan says, I missed the last two periods, but watched my nephew take gold in cities, so I'd say that was so worth it. I am jacked up. Oh, congrats, RBM, to your nephew. Excellent accomplishment. Uh, Shaggy in St. Albert Texan says, Another, uh, glad they won, but again, they make it closer than it should be. Dumb penalty by dry settle at the end of the game. That could have cost them. Taco says, uh, Skinner made some big saves today. Props to him. Would the addition of Bushnevich be a bigger ad than Bukestad last season? Yeah, probably. Although Bukestad was a really good pickup. Really good pickup. Yeah, I mean, it's tough to say, but as, as far as points, you know. Points, yes. He does have Overall more impact, offensive upside, yeah. but yeah. as far as, like, the little things, like, I don't know if he's as defensive as Bukestad. and. Bugstad was a great pickup. The uh, right shot, which is something the Oilers lacked Good for being a center. So Good on the dot. It's tough to say. Uh, this one uh, says, three in a row, dickheads. <laughs> I believe this texter has called us dickheads since day one. <laughs> Uh, that was like my favorite text ever. I, I responded good. to that texter once, and I said, LOL, yes, and that's Richard head to you. Right? Uh, so there we go. Uh, Dottie M says, we finally goalied another team. Stu feels really good instead of my complaining. Feels damn good. That's from Donnie M. Jimbo says, uh, coming for the Canucks. Unbelievable. Consider both team starts. Love, Jimbo. Jim Bocatokes. Okay, all right, Jimbo. Uh, this one says, when I think of Kiprosov, I think of Iggy and all the bad years. Best goalie to play NHL hockey in Alberta since who? I say Ranford. Displaced you, Connor. Forgetting Cujo. Salo had a few all-star seasons. Rollison. Joaquin Gage. I kid, I kid. That's a big one. That's yeah. a big one. But, uh, yeah, Kipper was uh, very, very, very good for quite a long period of time. A testament to his longevity, durability, and uh, the Flames had a pretty good run with him. That's for sure. All right, time to get to one last order of business. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, the nasty chat as well as the inbox uh, as well. 
after we get to this. It is time now for the player of the game, brought to you as always by Damon Bunting, Remax Elite. Damon Bunting, consistent top producing realtor in Greater Edmonton and among Remax Realtors, he and his team would love to help you find that right home or make the move from your current home. Community driven, he understands what it takes to make a difference in our city. Check him out, damonbunting.com or visit. Him on Instagram at Damon Bunting Real Estate uh, YTT. Take it away, pal. Awesome. Thank you for that, Tommy. Uh, so this is uh, the first time I'm going to be doing this. Well, it's the first time I have done this, but it was really, really close. It was between between two players, two players we, we have talked about on t- tonight's show. Uh, Brett Kulak. He hasn't been a player of the game this season, but I can't not you know ignore what he did today. You guys talked at length. He's just he, this is the time where you start to see Kulak really the importance of him. He's a shifty skater, and then we all know what he does in the playoffs. He's very reliable, and he had uh, the game winner tonight, Tommy. So and on that play, he saved a goal as well. Like that's just that's a huge that's a huge shift. Uh, that's a huge you know piece of the game, and uh, ultimately that, that could have been why they won. But another reason why the Oilers won tonight was. Stuart Skinner. I mean, ah, they yes. they both like they they both were really really significant pieces in tonight's uh, W for the Oilers. Stuart Skinner, he's been lights out, uh, you know, pretty well all season long. Not the best start, but tonight, I mean, just looking at his numbers, nine sixty save percentage, saved all but one shot tonight. Unbelievable. So those are your players of the game tonight, ah, Tommy. Co players of the game. Yep. Uh, congratulations to both of those gentlemen. They will receive a ribbon hand. Created by Mr. Waterwings himself, YouTube Trev. I will deliver those when they arrive back in town tomorrow and I get to the rink. I'm kidding. They don't get a player of the game ribbon. Although that would be hilarious. Oh, that's funny. Uh, All right. Let's see what's going on in the nasty chat. Uh, Dudley says he's cheering for Buffalo. They were up one nothing. Are they still? Let's have a look and a little refresh action there. Sabres are leading Vegas, one nothing. three minutes left in the first period. And then what else do we have? Uh, JCD says he thinks the Oilers will be right there with Vancouver at the end of the season. And, uh, <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Nathan, big uke, is uh, out of here. Says, have a good night, Nasty. See y'all tomorrow. I love it. Uh, people enjoying the Richard head. <laughs> name all right uh hit that thumbs up button always appreciate it that's gonna do it for the oil stream post game show the oilers get the win in seattle in a matinee matchup big big performance from Stuart skinner 24 saves some huge ones timely ones especially in the early going where he needed to be on to keep the oilers in it and being down a goal he made sure that that did not happen Dry settle and Kulak, the goal scores. Vinny DeHarnay, a beast blocking shots, an absolute warrior. And at the end of the day, it is two points in the bank for the orange and blue. That is going to do it for the Oil Stream postgame show. We will be back tomorrow for the Oil Stream pregame show. 5.30 p.m. It's a 7 o'clock start against the Pittsburgh Penguins. They are taking on the Calgary Flames at the Saddle Dome tonight. Check them out if you want to do a pre-scout uh, for YouTube, Trev, and Joaquin Gage. I'm Tom Gazzola saying thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you. Enjoy your Saturday night. Mix in the water. Be safe. Talk to you tomorrow. Ciao, ciao.